Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Mouse Menace and with me today are my two fellow mice, Fox in a Fix and Austin Kelly. Say hi. Hiya, very glad to be here for the very first fully directed Art Davis cartoon. Hi, it's uh, Fox and I've never ever heard anyone talk about this cartoon before. So as mentioned, this is Mouse Menace, released in 1946. It's the 486th in the series, and it's directed by Art Davis. You can currently find this on the Porky Pig's Superstars DVD set, and I have a link below to that set. In case you haven't seen this cartoon, it's very straightforward. So Porky has a mouse problem, and this mouse is incredibly smart, to the point where he outwits all of these cats. So Porky ends up getting a mechanical cat, and... The mouse has a little bit more of a challenge on his hands. What you're about to see is a remix of an audio commentary I did before I had to take it down due to a request by Warner Brothers Legal. In fact, a lot of you probably haven't even seen this one because it was only up for a few days before I took it down. So grab some popcorn and enjoy. we see uh, what Fox looks like on a Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like you said, uh, it was kind of just a cliche for cat and mouse or bird and cat cartoons where they would just throw in a robot and they'd try to replace, you know, the cat or whoever's chasing the tinier animal. Uh, and those Tom and Jerry's with the robot cat are kind of some of the weaker entries in the series, but I think the energy in the gags and the other characters that came before the robot in this one uh, make up for kind of the cliched idea. I mean, I think I laughed harder at some of this stuff than I ever did at a Warner cartoon, and maybe even more so than, you know, some of the later Clampets that people really like. I mean, I think this one's a really underrated cartoon. Yeah, mm. I feel like uh, Art Davis has some of the Clampet uh, energy still in him, so he was uh, a, a worthy uh, successor. Now that we're talking about Davis and Porky, I do want to say... It feels like, especially with this cartoon, Davis almost doesn't care for Porky. I mean, most of the cartoon is focused on the mouse or other more interesting characters like, you know, the George Raft cat or, you know, any other one of the things that comes in. Um, Avery and Clampett's earliest Porky cartoons also did a similar thing where they focused on other characters. And Tashlin was not afraid to hide his hatred for Porky. And Chuck Jones kind of just demoted Porky to a sidekick later on. So... And also, when you started out as a director at the Warner Studio, you were only allowed to do cartoons with Porky Pig, Daffy Duck, or create your own characters. So, all around, I mean, it seems like most people actually hated Porky, which is weird, because I'm not so sure they kept on using him, especially because, you know, during and after the war years, it was very clear that Bugs was the big star and Porky was no longer, you know, their big hit character. But Art Davis was in Tashlin's unit, so maybe he picked up a thing or two um, as we see this doll, which is probably going to prevent this from being on HBO Max, but I don't know, but we'll... And of course, there's Stan Laurel Cry <laughs> from Laurel and Hardy. If you're familiar with Laurel and Hardy, <laughs> Stan Laurel will do that um, <laughs> cry a lot of a bit. Our Davis did uh, a few really funny porkies like uh, this one or Best Who Came to Dinner and Bye Bye Bluebeard, who is also about, uh, also about a mouse, uh, as well as some really good daffies. But he did only one where they're uh, they're in it together. It's called uh, Riff Raffy Daffy. But you'll get yep. to it. I mean, it, this is almost like Porky's poultry plan in a way where it's just so shockingly good for a first cartoon. I mean, that was almost like a Tashlin S shot where the angle and the cat get growing bigger and bigger over the, you know, the course of 10 or 12 seconds, however long it was, kind of emphasized how much power it had. I mean, it was a really a powerful shot. I really love that about Davis. Mm, and yeah, any I work and of this one's uh, really underrated. I do, uh, I do want to say that I love this scene with the, uh, the with the cat we saw before who uh, got a bowling ball on his head. I think uh, R. Davis did the funniest minor characters for sure. Yeah, 
such a, such a, such a strong character for, yeah, for a minor character. He does it again. <laughs> One of the interesting things about revisiting some of these shorts is how I'm getting a bigger appreciation on the musical cues in, in these shorts. And part of that is, I think, my good friend Manny Cruz has been on a few of these shorts and he's also discussed some of these cues himself. But there's two in particular which I just think is absolutely hilarious. I mean, right here you've got Oh You Beautiful Doll when he was playing with the doll, of course. And Home Sweet Home when the home blows up. So, yeah, Carl Starling definitely had a big sense of humour. So in terms of rating, look, I give this one about a 7.5 out of 10. Austin told me about, he would give it about 7 out of 10 himself. I wasn't able to reach out to Fox to get his score, but I'm pretty sure it'll be about the same. It's a solid debut for Art Davis, and it's a really funny cartoon. Is it the most memorable? Perhaps not. But hey, it's certainly better than Buddy. Nice work, Mr. Any final thoughts, gentlemen, as we uh, wrap up this uh, wonderful debut for... Uh, well, true debut, I should say, for Art Davis, because we know he, he finished Bacolta Arms, but... I have no idea how people don't talk about this one as much as they should, because, I mean, I think it's a classic. And I just want to say it's uh, crazy that this year has uh, six different directors uh, working on it. So that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Should I tell him?